Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Dead Edition of In the Comics. Dead Edition. Russell Johnson here. <laughs> What's up? Dave Cottingham, and we are here talking the last two episodes of The Walking Dead. Yes. Episodes uh, 10 and 11. Um, the Next World was number 10, and then Knots and Tie was number 11. Two big episodes, mainly because of the introduction of a new character. Yes. That's very well known in the mm-hmm. books. Fan, so we'll, fan favorite. In the yes. Books. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then, of course, uh, the big union. Yeah. Yeah. They've changed things up. And I, I did a little, re- not research, but I read some executive producers' comments on why some of these things happened. Oh, cool. Why they did it. So that was kind of, I mean, it's, All right. it's a good explanation considering we are comparing a little bit to the comics mm-hmm. itself. So uh, you'll see why things changed. So let's dive into episode 10. Um and like we talked about just bef- just a minute before we start recording, uh, two months after the mid season premiere, yeah, it's two months later. Uh, Michonne's staying with Rick and Carl. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 this episode. Yeah, he says he says something like you know she wants toothpaste when he goes out, and he said, well, we'd have some if somebody hadn't been using it every day for the past two months. Right, right. Me and her. So she's been there for two months now. So there's a bit time jump. Carl's got his eye all bandaged up now. He's kind of dealing with it, living with it. It's not like kind of the day after. So see a little bit down the road, they're feeling comfortable, safe in their house. and Walls are rebuilt. Yeah. So everything's coming together for them. So. No more walker threat right now. Um, so, so the big thing is, is uh, they're short of supplies. Yes. Shorter supplies. Need to go out and get more supplies. And I love the fact, because we haven't seen Rick and Daryl together in a long time. Yeah. They haven't really done a whole lot together. You know what I mean? Just, um, yeah. What'd you think of the whole buddy cop scene as they were kind of leaving? The- I actually, you know, I actually, this episode here, I felt, even when we talked about the new character, I just felt like it was a lighter episode. It was more fun. I mean, yeah. for, for what it is. I mean, Walking Dead is never a fun yeah, thing, but it seemed like they were, you know, cautious, but still, it just seemed, it didn't have that weight of, like, danger and threat constant. They were just kind of like, oh, we're going to find some stuff, and it was kind of like a buddy thing. It was kind of cool. They were playing the music, and, uh, yeah. you know, they was like, don't, 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 and playing, yeah, you know, ha- having a good time, so, um, or for, for, like, they could, so I like, I thought it was a lighter, fun episode, mm-hmm. even with the even when the new character showed up. It was right. still that way, you know. So, I thought it was a good episode to have after such a heavy episode as, as a, a mid- mid-season premiere. So, yeah, I didn't expect that because I remember you, you know they always show uh, some teaser uh, scenes, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's usually always the first scene in the in the right, show. Really, sure. mm-hmm. uh, you saw them uh, in the in the car when Eugene was kind of telling them what to yeah. get. You know, sorghum, it was, it was weird. Find some sorghum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so There's you knew that, that was coming, but, uh, <laughs> no, I loved it. I thought, I thought, and I was excited to see arguably the two most popular characters yeah. on the show yeah. kind of just together, you know, and, and, and think about it is you do that with, you have to do that with TV shows sometimes, which kind of, which I've mentioned on this show a few times, mm-hmm. how because of budgets, you always can't have a full cast. Yeah. You, have you can't to, have what you had in the season premiere. Right. They, they, they would have no budget. No budget, yeah. N- yeah, no way. So uh, so it's good to split them up a little bit, and I'm glad they actually did send Rick and, and Daryl together. So they're going out. They f- they find what they think is the jackpot. Yeah. Big truck full of supplies. Truck full of supplies. Everything. And- so then they stumble upon the new character, uh, Paul Monroe. Yeah, in the book it was Paul something or other. Um, something yeah, I can't book. remember. It was, was it? Yeah. yeah. The last name was different. The last name and was the different. Only, I think the only reason they did that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The only reason they did that is that people, the executive producers didn't want people to to be questioning the whole time, well, is it or is it or is it? So they just made, gave him a kind of a new name um, before he tells his, his nickname. Uh, that everybody knows he didn't want because yeah. everyone would be confused and writing it. And so they're like, ah, we'll just give him a little bit different name. That's why they did that. I think. And there was, you know, some news and rumors spread around that we would see this character, which is as he know, as he comes to know is Jesus. Yep. Um, showing up on set at some point. So, uh, I, I was actually, you know, because I, I do stay away from. Spoilers, like I don't read up on what's coming, so I, I didn't even actually know he was showing up on this episode. No, me either. Oh, okay, okay. No, I didn't so, know either. I didn't. Know I, 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 didn't I, I do kind of do that. Try not to 
say get too far ahead of the show itself right. to see what's coming. So yeah, I had no idea this would be the episode he appeared. So how surprised were you when you did see him? And oh well, I mean, as soon as he, I mean, I didn't need to know his name because he, they, correct, they, he is dressed identically. To the comic book. I mean, yes. identically. To the belts, everything. I mean, I went back and read the issue. Well, even the, he had a scarf. They had the scarf around his face yeah. and everything. Now, how he gets introduced is a little different. Um, he, he faced off against Michonne and... Um, Abraham. Abraham, mm-hmm. before, but instead of Rick and Daryl. But, uh, and he wasn't really stealing from them either. It wasn't yeah, yeah, in the yeah, book. Yeah. He was like, hey, thanks for the help type of thing. So, uh, but it all kind of, kind of plays out the same way, at least as far as him being introduced. But yeah, he looked... I knew it instantly. Like, oh my gosh, there he is. So, um, and I liked it because I thought uh, I can't remember the, guy, the actor's name. He plays him, but I thought he brought a lot of like depth to the character that I, I'm not, I wasn't. I mean, I like Jesus in the in the comic book, but I, he was never like, oh, there's Jesus, you know. On the show, he's just got a lot of depth to him. He's right. he's he's funny. He's quick. I mean, he's quick witted. Um, he just feels like a, and I like him much better on the TV show now. I even like him better in the book now because I get a feel for like who he's supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know, being able to escape, being tied up. Oh, I mean, yeah. that, that scene where they, they take off and leave tied up and they're driving along and like, is he on the roof? I'm like, <laughs> what? How'd he get on the roof before he took off? So, I know, right? um, it was, I, I think his character on the show is fantastic. I love his character. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you can tell right away that, uh, for people that, are familiar with him in the book, you know, all these scenes that are happening with him trying to get the truck, he's not being malicious about right. it. Like he could have easily, the way he, you, way you see him fight, mm-hmm. oh, he could have easily, the fight scene, his first Rick fight out. scene with Rick was awesome. Yeah. He's, you know, bam, yeah. bam, bam, yeah. knocked him down, knocked Daryl down. So he can fend for himself. He could have easily taken him out. Right. He, yeah, he could have. But he's but he's keeping him alive. So you can already tell he's he's a good character. He's going to be a good character. He's good for the group. Um, and he comes from a place that's similar to where Rick and Daryl are from. So, um, but the way it plays out, you know, they you know, which is different from the book. But they end up obviously knocking him out and you know bringing him back to the community. Yeah. Man, how bad did you feel? Oh. That truck was going. The truck was rolling backwards and just went, just uh, goes right into the water and. But that's the best. That the was thing. the best payoff of the show. I thought that, that episode. Yeah, I think so too. Because it would have been one thing to get it and go back and be happy, right. but like all that effort gone. Oh man, for one for for one guy, which puts him, you know, at least in terms of Rick and Daryl, as like a threat. Correct. Um, like he he costs us this, he costs us that, and the chase scene in the field. <laughs> yeah, they're that running back awesome. and forth. Yeah, that was so great. Yeah, like, like they're like playing tag or something, you know. <laughs> it was great. I I loved it. I thought it was an awesome scene. Uh, so then that you know kind of comes to a close in a very very interesting episode. Uh, we finally get what. And here's the thing too. Again, being kind of away from social media and that stuff, I didn't see that coming either. Well, not not just that, but apparently there's been a big call for this. Oh, has there? I yeah. Haven't, I haven't um, heard. Rashon, right? They're calling him Rashon. Okay. Rick and Rashon, okay. right? All right. You know, the whole, uh, uh, I don't even know, uh, like Affleck and Affleck and the, yeah. you know, Benifer. Benifer, yeah. Benifer and then Affleck and Lopez. Is that, oh, that was, they were Benifer, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so, yeah, the Rashon. Yeah, it's just, yeah, people do that now. Maybe. And I didn't know there was a big calling for it because I never really thought about it that way. I didn't I either. thought that was going to happen. How, so you it, were surprised? I was very surprised because, yeah. I mean, well, I thought at the very beginning of the episode, I'm like, because she had come out of the shower. I'm like, are, are they? Yeah, yeah. But I was yeah, like, yeah. no, nah, she's just living there. Because in the book, that never happened. So I had had no reason to believe it was going to happen on the show. Um, but at the end, I was like, when they're both relaxed and calm and talking about rough days they had and so mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, I was like, yeah, something's going to happen here. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And it did. It did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in, in comparing to the book, it's it's Andrea. Andrea, yeah. That mm-hmm. is still around and that Rick kind of gets together with because she is that very – Michonne is still around in the book too. But Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, she is that very strong-willed person in the mm-hmm. book, unlike her TV character. I never really liked her TV character. Yeah, and I think that's uh, why they've done what they've done. I think the executive, one of the executive producers said that now that Andrea's gone, the roles that she played in the book are being doled out to other people. Like, there's mm-hmm. going to be somebody's good with a gun, and so Michonne becomes the love interest for Rick, 
at that point because Andrea's not there. So they like just took her character and broke it up in many pieces and gave the, her skills and how she plays into the actual show or the actual book itself just spread among other characters. So mm-hmm. I thought that was a good explanation for it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're together now. Yeah, and in, in, in dramatic fashion, it kind of ends with, you know, them, them laying in bed and you hear Rick off camera or the, the voice of someone say, Rick, Rick, Rick. I was like, oh, something troubles, trouble brewing or something. Yeah. I mean, I kind of thought it was going to be him. I didn't think, I didn't anticipate them jumping <laughs> up. And I thought there was going to be a problem. Maybe like you were right. you guys saying, like, right. someone's, hey, we got a problem, you know? Right, exactly. Like, That's what I thought, it was, I thought it was. It's Jesus standing yeah, there. Just standing there. Got free. <laughs> Again, can't keep him tied up. <laughs> I think someone on, I, I, I don't want to say this wrong, but I think someone on Talking Dead said something like, damn, it must have been so good Jesus showed up. <laughs> That's awesome. Completely jerk. That's good. Uh, but anyway, that rolls right into the next episode where, um, and uh, exciting times because, you know, as, as, as Rick sits down with uh, Jesus in the group, you start to understand that there is what's what was dubbed in the comic book a larger world. Yeah, your world's about to get a whole lot bigger. A whole lot bigger. So, uh, so going into this episode, um, I mean, obviously we saw, it, but what do you think when we? What do you think we were going to get into? Uh, I wasn't sure. We I wasn't sure how they're going to deviate from the book itself. And like I said, I went back and read after his appearance on that last episode, I went back and read like the next four issues of the book and that sequence there. So I was really wanting to see how close they stuck, stuck to the comic book. And I was expecting a lot of changes. Now the only change we really got from, cause they follow the book pretty closely mm-hmm. um, is when they come across that car that's wrecked and yeah. Jesus says, you know, and, and this time and like, unlike the book, um, you know, Carl didn't sneak onto the, Oh right! Yeah. The RV, uh, you know, Carl. It was, it, Carl stayed behind. To, to, which I thought was a great scene, actually, because you know Rick. He hasn't told anybody. He gets kind of caught in the middle. Everybody shows up to their house, and um, you know they people like know that uh, Michonne and Rick are together now. Yeah, and um, right before they're about to leave, you know, Rick is talking to Carl. He's like, "Look, Carl, you know." I wanted to tell you, but you know, we just it literally just happened. And the car was just like, finally was like, I get it, dad. It's cool. Like, it's all right, man. It's fine. Yeah. You know? So, uh, that was a cool scene between them. It was. was like, you know, um, you know, so they didn't have, Rick, they didn't have Carl, you know, s- sneaking on. And it's just so funny. Cause how long is this? How long is this like two years, really a sp- time span for, <sighs> yeah, I guess because, because Judith is kind of the, uh, to me is almost. The, yeah. So she's yeah. not even, I don't she's think she's even a year yet. She's not even walking or anything. Yeah, no. So if you go back, I saw, I, was, I think it was a um, Honest Trailers thing, and they showed Carl when the show started, which was six years ago. Yeah. Um, he's like a little, a little kid. kid. Like He aged. <laughs> like, yeah. To, like, like his he's voice a grown already, man in two years. voice has already changed, probably shaving in like less than two years. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Because in the book, he's still like a little kid. He you is. Know? Um, he, still, he still feels like a young little kid. Now he feels like a... He can take care of the place. I like Carl take care of it. He'll handle it. So, um, but that was just kind of right. funny. But yeah, so they came across a, a wreck, and Jesus was like, "Those are my people." So I, I think they went out of the way to give a little bit of a threat, mm-hmm. and you know, put Rick's crew on guard, but also give Jesus an opportunity instead of just going to the hilltop saying, "Those are my people." Yeah, you know. So it was a little more. It kind of went a little further to, you know, Rick is still skeptical the whole time, and. They're slowly, slowly, slowly giving him reason to trust him, mm-hmm. to trust Jesus. So they find a doctor, yes. and another guy, an actual obstetrician, former OGBYN, yes. um, who actually is a doctor at the Hilltop. Um, Huge for Maggie and, so, and Glenn. So Glenn saves them and um, in this house, and then they, so they head to the Hilltop. Yep. Yeah, so at the Hilltop, uh, we come across new characters, new situations, Um and we're introduced to uh, Gregory, um, who is running that hill, the, running the hilltop. Um, and that set looks exactly like I that. know, yeah, exactly. I mean, open exactly. the door, the blacksmith when you come in, huge mansion, mansion. the, mm-hmm. the turret of the little tower at the top. They could look. I mean, every it almost dialogue was almost the same. It was, it was. But how surprised were you when um, 
Rick turned to Maggie well, to do the negotiating? Um, I was a little surprised by that, but I thought in, in the context of the show, I'm like, that's actually a good move. Mm-hmm. Let's let, cause, cause we know in the books down the road, Maggie ends up having basically leading her own community of Correct. people. Um, she's, she's obviously a leader and this is a good opportunity for the show to insert her as one. Someone who can negotiate, someone who can talk, and right. someone who can take care of and lead the team, and let Rick. Because in the book, it's like they come into the house, and Gregory pulls Rick aside immediately, and is like, "You know, I want to talk to the guys in charge here." So I thought I thought it was a good move to do that to put Maggie in that role. I kind of split again, split up the the roles from the books to other people to give it a lot mm-hmm. more depth amongst the characters, not just Rick all the time. So I thought that was a great move on on, on the show's part. Uh, yeah, I did too. I thought, uh, you know, I thought Rick, he, he's going to obviously ultimately make the decisions, it seems like still, you know, but it, it gives somebody else more responsibility. I think he's just smart on, mm-hmm. on that part to give her the ability. Because, you know, Deanna, he says Deanna's the one that kind of yeah. wanted to talk to, yeah. to her and kind of put her in It all position. started there with Deanna. Yeah. You know, so Maggie, you're going to be great. And she helped Deanna out. And, right, right, um, right. Also, the thing gave an opportunity, unlike the book, it was just kind of negotiations between Rick and Gregory, whereas in the show, Gregory comes off as a huge a-hole. Yes. Um, to Maggie, you know, and so I thought yeah, that gives it, that and, gave yeah. it a little bit of a twist as well, yeah, totally. I thought. Because I, I, I didn't see Gregory like that at all in the book. And on yeah. the show, I was like, God, because mm-hmm. Jesus came off better than he did in the book to me, and Gregory came off a whole lot worse. A whole lot worse, yeah. Than he does in the book. So ultimately, um, things play out to where we're inter- reintroduced to the situation of Negan. Yes, Negan sending uh, sending these these guys to kill Gregory for some reason. You know, uh, they're they're uh, he's I think it was short on supplies. I yeah, think he ultimately, said it wasn't right? enough. So Rick makes the did, you, did Rick makes the ultimatum of. The offer of you know this is what we'll do we'll take care of Negan for half yeah years that's the only thing right? they have to negotiate Correct. with they have nothing so how surprised are you that we've already are you surprised at all that we've already gotten to this point where we're I'm a little surprised we got this far yeah I got the best surprise we got this far because uh, again this file, the the fight scene all that pretty much I started changing some characters out for who they who they were it plays out exactly like the book mm-hmm. I mean even to the point where Rick has to kill that guy. Um, who who stabbed Gregory uh, and is just covered in blood because he cuts his throat and bloods his because it yeah. happens like that in the book I'm like how are they gonna do that I mean I knew that I'm like are they actually gonna do that on the show and they did and for Rick to stand up just turn around covered in blood and just like what <laughs> you know that is just that's that's that was gold there yeah 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 um, but I'm I'm surprised they kind of went this far like or already they got him supplies heading back to camp we're gonna take care of Negan boom you know it's it's that was that was a, it, that issue that. That sh- that show was like one one issue of the comic book, literally. Mm-hmm. So before we wrap this up, I, I do want to bring up um, kind of a character that was kind of not lost in in what was happening, but um, one that was definitely changing throughout. And you mentioned it as Abraham, actually. Yeah. Um, very interesting what they're doing with his character right now. Because they um, showed him and Ro- uh, Rosita together. Yes. Right. Uh, much like we saw Rick and Michonne together. And but he's kind of well, torn because Sasha has now said, Look, I can't go on patrol with you anymore. I gotta do this thing. Cause he's like, Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. And all. that was the beginning of the episode. That was. They they came back from patrol. Um So what do you think they're doing with him? I really don't know. Um I think he's just questioning unlike the book, because in the book he's still he's still pretty much just the same character he he's always been. Um He's the fighter. He's the soldier. All that kind of stuff. But in this one, I think he's just questioning. Now that he knows that you know Maggie's pregnant, mm-hmm. and now that there he sees an actual, there are more communities who aren't trying to kill everybody else yeah. around them, and they're not evil. Uh, he's starting to question where he's where can he can, can he have a life? Can he have a can there really be something more than just surviving? Because that's all they they're doing is surviving. Um, now they want to be able to provide a t- reason to live, mm-hmm. you know, a reason for living. Um, I think he, I think they're just making this kind of weird love triangle between Sasha and Rosita and him. Yeah. Um, 
because Rosita made it in that little necklace with the from little bright light and everything, and that got lost. Yeah. In the fight, because um, he was most people. Because in the book, it's just Rick. Yes. Everybody else is off doing like get cleaned up. He's already talked to Gregory. They come out and then that the people bust in and say, you know, go to Gregory. And uh, the one guy tries to kill him. And it's just Rick. He did nobody else gets in a fight with the, the rest of the community. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this time they had, you know, Abraham was involved in a big fight sequence. Michonne was, um, and, but yeah, Glenn a little bit. Glenn yeah. was involved. So they had, they showed who these people, they really showed who, Rick's group are correct. How they can hold ha, everyone can defend yeah. themselves, right? So, um, yeah, with Abraham, I'm not really sure. I think he, I think he, I don't know. The, I don't want to call it a weakness, but I think he's just starting to realize that wow, you know, things are happening because mm-hmm. when, when he's talking to Glenn and these metaphors, like he always likes to do, he <laughs> says, he "says when you're spilling the biscuit, did you mean to make biscuits?" <laughs> I was like, "What?" Yeah. Or pancakes or whatever it was. Um, he he didn't get it at first. Like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, and so Glenn just kind of tells him, you know, we weren't necessarily, tr- you know, we want to have a life. Yeah, we're trying to have something, we're trying to build something, here. build something yeah. together. So, right. um, and that's that's what they have. So I think he's. It's just it, it's a new shift in character for him. It gives right. him a little more emotion, a little more depth. I think. I unfortunately think that they're making him more. Likeable, because I think For something bad's gonna happen to him. Yeah, I, I, you know, we've been debating this kind of since we knew Negan was coming. Is like who's gonna be the one to get the bat to the head uh, first time? Yeah, um, yeah, I think they are setting everybody up because again, they've made these these two episodes. Even though they still there's still been some tensions, fighting zombies, stuff like that. They have been more. It's less like always a threat and a fight. It's like they're actually feels like they're they are a community now. They are yeah. doing something. So, yeah, they're softening everyone up. I think I I, I agree with you. I think they're doing something where because we've talked about this. There's only a handful of characters you really care of that they die or not. Correct. Um. So you, and right now, yeah, right now Abraham might not have been one of them. Might not have been. Because I mean, he would been. It would have. It, it would suck to see him go. It but, would have because he he had been around for a little while. But it wouldn't be as impactful as you know a Daryl or a Glenn yes. um, or anything like that. Right. Because I felt like you know like similar to Tyrese, I, I wasn't that upset when he left. Yeah. You know, um, in the book, I I th- I, th- I, th- I think the Tyrese character was a lot more likable. He oh, did yeah. he did oh, a lot yeah, more. Yeah, he was yeah, there yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he was kind of the more the Daryl of the I felt like of the uh, the series in the beginning of the books, but um, but Abraham is is starting to become more likable, more appealing. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's got more of a love interest with mm-hmm. a couple girls now. So it's yep. yeah, it's they 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 set it up with Daryl because he killed all those men. Now you have now as a reason for Abraham to possibly be that person. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know, but. And we don't want to give too much away of what happens. We don't know how much they're actually going to stick to the book. Right? Yeah, it, could, it could all change. It could be this is the so. closest I've seen them stick to the book. I agree. You know, I, agree. I think they're doing that too with even like characters like Denise, because there's a real brief scene where she gives you know Daryl a cookie, yes, or whatever, to eat this, got a lot of protein, and he's just like, ah, I don't need it, blah blah blah. Um, and she's like, you know, just eat it. You know, take care of yourself. Type. Of, it's like it, she says, you remind me of somebody I used to know. Type of thing. She's, she's got a little. She doesn't have a crush because she's she's gay, but um, I think she just has this like brother sister thing with Daryl yeah. possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're softening Denise. I, I like I like Denise a lot more. Yeah. Um, not that I didn't before, but in the book she's just kind of you know she does her little bits and comes in and out. Where I think they're trying to build her a little more, correct, as a character that they can rely on, depend on, um, and get close to with the other main characters. I think it was, that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. I, I you totally make people agree. get close to uh, these are, are the characters we really care about. And consequently you care more about mm-hmm. them. So, and I think they're bringing, I think bringing in Jesus to the way he, they have making him such a cool, likable character. He's yeah. That, that, it's almost, it almost feels to me like he's replacing He's gonna be really could be, could, I, but somebody. You know but what I mean? he's so he's such a good character on the show. I like him so much that I'd be bummed if he died. Oh, totally. Like early. Oh, you know, absolutely. That would be absolutely. like, oh crap, that would suck. Yeah. Um, 
But did you see did you see the Talking Dead afterwards? I have not seen Talking Dead. Though. I think not, the guy who plays one. him's name is Thomas Paine, actually. Okay. He's English. Yes. Um, and he does a great American accent. Um, and at the time on the show, on on Talking Dead, he's he's he grew he's grow he grew the beard, but on the show because it was so early, that was a fake beard, so he had to actually grow one ah. in, um, and growing his hair long too. It's only like here, you know, now, but he's like trying to get. So obviously he's gonna be around for a little while. Oh, he's growing the real yeah, beard, right, growing right, the real right. hair. Um, <laughs> it's just, and it was funny too. It was like on the panel, I had Maggie and uh, a rapper who I don't know. Well, I actually thought it was pretty cool. Um, and Thomas Paine, and before he spoke, I go, "He's gonna be, he's gonna be British." Because even Hardwick made a comment to that. It was like another Brit we're coming losing, over here, yeah, we're losing all the British, stealing our jobs. All the actors, yeah. <laughs> he's all good right. though. He's good though. I like him a lot. All right, so a ton more to lead, a ton more to see and lead up to the the season finale. Uh, so much going to happen. I think we uh, that's three, so only five more episodes left. Yep. Uh, the next one coming up this weekend, uh, not tomorrow yet, is what the name of it's called. Again, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I'd be really. Inter- I'm in really it. interested to see where this goes. This, yeah. this episode goes. I only see the trailer at the end of the episode mm-hmm. where they're kind of just looking and, and they're moving in formation and all these places. Right. Yeah. So. Just real quick, though, don't you agree? I, I do believe, though, if one more comparison to the book, I believe that this group on the television of Rick is a ton more stronger than whatever we've seen in the book. I think they're more skilled. They're, you know, just like watching that episode, that, that trailer for this week's episode, the way they walk in formation, it's almost military style. It's like they, they're, they're I just feel like they're more of a co- cohesive uh, killing machine yeah. group than they are in the book. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree so. with that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this it's gonna be interesting when when the saviors meet Rick's crew. Yeah, man. it's just so funny knowing what you know in the book, and they're like, "I oh, will take care of him." Yeah, no big deal. And like, everybody's like, "Oh, you just have no idea what's no coming." Idea. You have no uh, idea. For those of you who don't know, if you get a chance to read it, read it. If not, we're obviously not trying to spoil anything. I'm not spoiling anything. We're just letting you know that. It gets bad. Negan is literally the worst villain ever in The Walking Dead. Yeah. So absolutely. Have you you've seen the governor? And he, governor was worse in the book. Yeah, I he think, was than, than on the TV show. Totally. Um, but Negan is hands down the worst. Yeah, yeah. he's the hands worst. So. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, come back uh, very soon. Hopefully next week when we get uh, talking about the next episode and, and and diving into more Walking Dead stuff. So. And Fear of the Walking Dead starts April 10th, I believe. I think, yeah. Is it right after the... Yeah, because I think they're... I think they're, they're, they're running right up. They're running um, the episodes weekly now um, on AMC after... No. Some, I may have to have to talk I don't know when it is. Um, but they're run, rerunning the, the, the six nice. episodes, and that's going to run up to the season premiere. Which I've seen the t- I've seen the trailer for that. And I looks like oh wait don't. out in the water man that's crazy. But they're still they're still under attack. I don't I know like, well, it's gonna be crazy. It's it's yeah. it's cool. Looking forward to that, and we'll definitely talk about that as we keep going on. Dead edition. Dead edition. In the comics, he's Russ. He's at director four two one on Twitter. I'm decoding him two one on Twitter. And then next week though, I do want to or at some point. Got a little contest we're going to do. We're going to do a little giveaway. Yes. And we'll also be talking probably a little bit about next week. We have next weekend, we have our, our Lexington Comic Con. That's right. Um, so we may have some stuff to talk about. I don't know. Yes, um, that's right. But our Comic Con's coming. So we're going to be heading to that on Saturday, Sunday. It's yep. next week. We have fucking time. So. so we don't know. Keep it here on this YouTube channel. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.